And a good morning to you all. Welcome to April the 1st of 2024. And I promise you 100% folks, there will be no practical jokes or fake news in this particular episode. Definitely a lot of fake news all over the internet and fake silly things and fake, um, yeah, there's a lot of fakery, but not here, not now. Just questions, just answers. Um, I do want to say something that is definitely not, okay, and I have to say this because if we announce anything today, then people think if it's, it's a joke, it's not. Dice Tower Cruise, tickets go live today at noon. So if you want to come on a Dice Tower Cruise, which you should consider, you want to do that. You want to do it as soon as possible because, well, it might sell out. And two, you want to get the rooms that you want. Definitely rooms sell out for sure. Um, and each year we sell out faster than the previous year, just like Dice Tower East. Dice Tower East is down to just, I think, less than a couple hundred tickets at this point in time. And so lots of cool things there. I'm getting a really great dexterity game uh, for Dice Tower East, which I'm excited to bring in there. Actually, I think I've had it like 10. Um, so that's going to be good. Um, anyhow, that is uh, what's uh, happening here for Dice Tower. So Dice Tower Cruise and Dice Tower East. You want to come to both of those if you can. Okay, so. Uh, if you have questions, go ahead and ask them in the chat, and I'll jump into them. Had my kids home over the weekend from college. It's Amy's last time uh, coming from college because she is graduating in May. So that's exciting. And then she, she already has a job lined up, working in marketing. So she'll be jumping to that in like a month after graduation. And then my other daughter, Holly, will be finishing up her sophomore year, becoming a junior. Uh, Violet is moving into her senior year here in high school this next year, and then she'll be going to college a year after that. So uh, anyway, the kids left this morning, and I am tracking them. I'll tell you what, that Find My app from uh, that Mac has on all the different devices, from iPhone, iPad, or whatever, is very, very handy. Uh, to keep track of where people are in the family. Just very useful, like, is my wife on her way home? Yep, she's uh, 20 minutes away, so I know how to time things. She's, she does it. She says she has dinner ready when I get home because she watches to see when I leave work. And also, it's, it's like, for parents, it's really handy. Like, as the kids are now driving through the entire state of Florida, we can just keep track of where they are at any given point. Um... Let's see here. Um, how many eggs do you hide or do you? Um, uh, my, my oldest kids hit some eggs for Jimmy to run around and find last night. And so that happened. But that was about it. Do you think we reached the limit of game box sizes and table space hogging of games? Oh, I do not know. I mean, it just seems like they get bigger. I, I hope so, really. Like, just for... I wonder if we'll look back in 20 years at this time frame and just kind of shake our heads and go, the hobby was kind of out of control when it came to size. We'll see. Do I like deviled eggs? Do I like deviled eggs? I love deviled eggs. Um, well, I've already reached the end of the questions, so I need more people to ask questions. <laughs> um, let's see here. I do like my favorite kind of eggs are over medium. Maybe over easy. Over easy or over medium are my favorite way to have eggs. Well, omelets are pretty solid. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, gaming-wise, I gamed almost not at all this week. Did I play any games at all? Like, I don't even think I... I didn't play many video games either. I played Transport Tycoon. The old version. I have Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe. You can get on Steam. But, uh... How often do you think a game by a well-known designer would not have been published if it was by an unknown designer? I think that a lot, and there's definitely truth to that. There's a lot of designers 
It happens in a couple different ways. One, it definitely happens on some Kickstarters where there's an extra game thrown in there from the same design, and I'm thinking, yeah, that game wouldn't have made it by itself. But there's a lot of times where I see games from very famous designers, and I'm like, ah, they had that in their drawer somewhere. And someone came to that designer and said, I would like to have one of your games. And they're like, well, I have this one. And so I think it happens a decent amount. Remember the old times when you could fit one game on a shelf? Is there an IP you'd be excited to see a board game made for? Hmm, G.I. Joe? Um, my brother and I are looking for a game that makes you feel like a samurai. Well, I don't know that I know exactly what a samurai feels like, but uh, I don't know. Maybe the chat can give you some better answers on that. I mean, there's lots of games that have samurai stuff in them that makes you feel like a samurai. Maybe there's one, but it's not coming to my mind right now. There's definitely video games like that. <laughs> James says, I think we've asked so many over the years, we've exhausted all of them. 2045 headline history books. The housing crisis in the later half of the 20s was solved by people moving into their boardrooms game boxes. Well, that's definitely, definitely the, the case of things. Um, or it seems to be that way anyway. Huh, I just got a notification. My dog's birthday is tomorrow. Not sure. I shouldn't even tell the kids because the dog was the dogs were wicked over the weekend. Wicked dogs. So very wicked. Um What rooms sell out first on the cruise? I don't actually know what rooms sell out first on the cruise. I just know that some rooms do. I know that the, the nicer rooms tend to sell out first, like if you like the balcony and stuff like that. Um, are there, are any already limited in number? Well, yeah, lots of rooms are limited in number. I just, I, I don't want to speak. I don't know what numbers the, the different rooms are. How did your kids like being featured in Domains, Towers, Slimer vs. Promo Pack? Yeah, they like that. Um, is there going to be a Jimmy SideQuest? I don't know about that. Did I finish the Alchemy expansion? Well, we haven't even started the Alchemy expansion. I think we played it as a live play thing at some point, but we haven't opened it up. My kids have been asking me about it for sure. Um, how many siblings do I have? I have two brothers and two sisters, and do you all get together for reunions? Unfortunately, we do not. I am trying to persuade the family to get together for something. Um, the last time we got together, unfortunately, was at my mother's funeral, which was six years ago now, almost. So it's been a while since we've all been together. I don't see them very often. My one brother lives in Pennsylvania. My other brother lives in Indiana. My one sister lives in Canada. And my other sister lives in Oregon. So we're, and I live in a tip of Florida. So we're all very far apart. We all have decent sized families. My one brother has four kids. The other brother has two. My sister has four. My other sister has four. But I'm still winning. As I point out to my dad often, I have the most. Although I actually am now Thai, since technically at home, I only have four kids, uh, since three of them are out of the house now. Has my dog met Alita? Alita what? Alita Battle Angel? I'm not sure what Alita is. Maybe I'm being dense here. Um, I'm going to Dice Tower 2023 by myself, and it's my first convention. Any suggestions how to make it a success? How do I find games to play? When are you expecting to update the schedule? Well, the schedule will be updated soon, I think. Um, we have lots of different events coming. Um, and uh, if you go by yourself, just, I recommend go to the Hot Games Room. If you want, you're, you'll definitely find people to play games in the Hot Games Room. Um, go look for Players Want It, Teacher Want It signs. If you know a game, you can teach people, and then you might end up playing more games with them. Same thing with Players Want It signs. Or you just put up a t you know a game yourself and look, put Players Want It, and people will join you. Especially if you pick a hot game. You know, just tempt people. 
Uh, and if all comes to fail, like I said, come find me and I will get you into a game. I'll find you people to play a game with. Um, just got back from Japan, spotted a very cool looking new game about making an onsen. Okay, I don't even know what an onsen is. Onsen towels. Oh, hot springs and the bathing facilities and traditional inns around them. Oh, okay, that sounds kind of cool. I haven't heard of this at all, but it sounds like a good theme for a game. Did we finish Tales from Red Dragon Inn? We did not. It's at my house to go through, but we just play so many new games and so much stuff, it's hard to finish any particular thing. Oh, yes, I'm also being notified that if it's your first time in the Dice Tower East, uh, definitely uh, sign up, uh, come to the Newcomers Meetup group. That's a great way to meet other people who are new to gaming, and that will definitely be something you can come to for sure. Are there any plans to have Trey Parker return for a top 10 or another video? I don't think so. There's no plans at the moment. Oh, Alita is Mark's dog. Well, that's fine. I, why would my dog... What was the question? Has your dog met Alita? Mark lives in Colorado. Um, you travel with dogs. Anyhow, um... Zork as a board game? I know they made a game... Didn't they make Zork as a board game? I can't remember. I can just look that up, I think. Zork board game. Hmm. Some people said Sunken City. Well, one person who reviewed Sunken City said it was Zork the board game. I doubt that. It's been a long time since I played Sunken City. Never seen Sunken City? Let me guys, let me show you guys. Um let me show you a picture of Sunken City because I got time. And this is a game you probably haven't heard of. So Sunken City, which came out in the year 2004, so 20 years ago, and it was designed by Michael Kiesling and Wolfgang Kramer. So let me, let me do this here. So here's the cover of the game. That's what Sunken City looks like. It's remover play. Not a great looking cover, but let me show you what the gameplay looked like. So, let's see if I can get this. There we go. So you can see here, there are these big blocky cubes and you were moving around from land to jump on these and this guy, I don't remember everything about the game, but it was such an interesting, cool game at the time. It was like, wow, look at this production. Now we look at it and go, Really? But at the time, we thought it was really awesome production. All right, so that is Sunken City. Um, have I played the Forgotten Circles Gloomhaven expansion? I played some of it. Do you think the Horror Fight system is done, or can you see there being more expansions or additions? Well, it's very popular, so I don't know why they wouldn't keep putting out more things as long as people keep buying them. I mean, Ravensburg is essentially a mass market company, and so they want money, so make more of what sells. Have you ever seen the movie Sergeant York with Gary Cooper, 1941? I have. Viola is almost old enough to go to college already. Well, not quite. She is 16. She's turning 17 this year, so. Yeah, my kids are getting old. I never done a cruise before. What besides gaming is there to do on this cruise? Well, DJ Dan, there's a lot to do. So if you go cruising, I mean, they have events. Forgetting board games, they have events all day long. They don't have a ton of events in the morning, uh, some exercising and stuff, but there's always different events on a cruise ship from shows, comedy shows, Variety shows, music shows. There's lots of different shows, and you can go to all of them. Um, they have, of course, there's food and eating all the time. There's 
different sports and activities you can play. Like on our ship, there's miniature golf and basketball and ping pong and all that sort of things. Um, you, the, the ship stops at different locations and you can get off and go out and see things in those locations. And you can just walk around and see stuff. Now you might think, that seems like there's gonna be a lot of extra time. You're right, that's when we game. But there's plenty to do. On the last ship we went to, there was an escape room too, which was a lot of fun. What would be an IP that, as far as you know, has not been a board game made about it that you would personally like to see a game made about it? Well, I already said G.I. Joe, but there isn't a board game about G.I. Joe. There's a card game, but that doesn't count. But other than that, I don't really care. I don't really care about IPs, intellectual properties, being turned into board games for the most part. I'm okay with just new board games. Maybe there would be something that would get me excited. You know, someone would say it about it, but I don't need... You know, if I'm watching a TV series, I don't sit there and go, man, I wish this would be a board game. I just want a board game to be good. I don't care what the property is underneath it. Have you tried some game activity coupling, like playing a train game on a train, eat apples and play a game with apples in it? I always feel like that feels, to me, that always feels super artificial. I mean, sometimes it's a joke, like this game's about ice cream, so we're eating ice cream, yay! I mean, maybe as a joke. But other than that, it just feels forced, and I don't know if I find it to be that interesting. That's a sharp hat there. I agree. Thank you. This is a hat from a company called Bruno Capello. You can see it there. They make superb hats. If you ever want to buy me a hat, and I'm not, I'm not trolling for hats, but they would be one of the companies I would recommend. This is a very nice hat. Um... Mike says, hard enough traveling with people. Yeah, well, I know that because I'll be traveling up to see my daughter graduate with my entire family. It's not as hard traveling with kids as it used to be, though. Electronic devices has changed that forever, for the bad and for good. Any news on the Chief? Well, last I heard from the Chief, and this was just a few days ago, um, he had fallen prey to one of those uh, it was a virtual reality game that was inside another virtual reality game, which was in an alternate dimension that was in a virtual reality game. The Inception thing sometimes becomes a little too difficult, although the idea, if you've watched Inception, the movie, they have this idea that everything happens really in slow motion in one world comparatively to the others. Now, sometimes one's faster than the others. It's all timey-wimey. They can go faster I mean, sometimes they're slower, but it just depends. Anyway, he was in there for a considerable amount of time, and it was a cross between Wizard of Oz. I mean, it was an army of evil tin men, actually. Uh, but they were able to stop them. They were able to stop them. It, it all worked out pretty well. And he said it wasn't particularly difficult, although now he's taking off two parsecs uh, of uh, personal time. What are my top three spring-themed games? Oh, I, uh, uh, spring themed board games. I don't even know what they are. Here's a list. Nah. Uh, Meadow. Oh, Meadow's a good spring themed board game. I'll say Meadow. I'm just making stuff up now uh, because I don't know, actually. It's not like there's a category on Board Game Geek for spring. Maybe there is, but I doubt it. We'll say metal, but isn't this just like nature-themed games? Is your game called Schools Out? Because that's one of my favorite spring themes, is the end of schools. Is Dice Tower East the only convention you take your copy of Pitch Car to? Well, yes, but this year, Pitch Car will also be at the Dice Tower Retreat. Do you have genuine tips for newcomers at Dice Tower events? Or in general, sorry, I lost the question here. Um, for groups, I'm sure you've seen some awkward tables. Well, I don't know what you mean by that, what you're asking for. I mean, there's tips about everything, right? Tips is go and have fun. It's just a game. It's always just a game. Um, enjoy the people you play with. You know what, though? You're not going to enjoy every person you play with. That just happens. Some people rub each other the wrong way. That's life. 
We meet people. You still be friendly? Then you look for other people to play a game with. Um, that's, that's basically the matter of course. I'll play a game with almost anybody once, and then different things might turn me off from playing with that people. For me, I don't love playing games with people when they're particularly slow, really slow. Um, although I might try to find a game I can play with them that you know minimizes downtime. Uh, I've met some people before who were very loud about their opinions on life in general. Um, so those people, <laughs> sometimes I don't want to play games with them either. But um, yeah, other than that, um, there's all kinds of things. Give me some specific tips you're looking for. Because you're just like asking in general. Um, do you pick out your hat to try and match what you're wearing for the day? Or do you just grab a random one? Well, we have, I have my wall of hats here in the Dice Tower Studio. So I look at the shirt I'm wearing. So here I was wearing a blue shirt. And I was like, all right, this matches pretty much. Not perfectly. And the yellow matches the blue a little bit. I try to match if I can. Obviously, don't always. Some guy wrote a very long comment recently on a video critiquing my, my not matching hat and shirt. <laughs> sort games in a shelf by color, name of the designer, or alphabetically by title. No to the, the, no to the alphabetically by title. Name a designer, maybe, but I just sort mine by shape. I keep trying to... I, used to, I did it by color once. I did a whole blues, yellows, white, whatever. It looked kind of cool. But it's also hard to find games when they all look the same color next to each other. Can we just put questions in the chat? Yes, indeed. Is there any chance of Dice Tower getting a hold of a copy of Meltscape and playing it? No. I already did play it. We all want to know what it's actually like. Well, I did a review, so go watch my review. <laughs> Favorite Muppet song? Oh, now that's a good one. Oh, I don't know. Well, let me go just list some that I like, and we'll see. So, from the original Muppets thing, moving right along, I like a lot. I love the uh, welcome to the. Something Hotel. Why is the name of it missing? You know, I'll just do a list of Muppet songs here. Let's see. List of Muppet songs. Life's a Happy Song. I like that one a lot. It's on my playlist. I like Life's a Happy Song a lot. It's Not Easy Being Green is fine. Uh, Cabin Fever. I enjoy that one a lot. That's from the Muppet Treasure Island. Um... Yeah, let's see here. I know people want to say mana mana, but that one's been done so much that I don't know that I love it. Am I a man or a Muppet? Eh, moving right along. Yeah, the Muppets show theme I like. Great. Um, Rainbow Connection is a good song, so we can't. Really, uh, do that. The Muppet Song playlist. This is what? Menomina. Thankful Heart. Well, that's a good song. I like that one. That's for, that's on Chris, that's on my Christmas track. Um, Together Again. I do like that one from the Muppets Take Manhattan. Mmm. When Love is Found is okay. That's from the Muppets Christmas Carol. When Love is Found. Let's see. We're doing a sequel. I do like that one, actually, a lot. We're doing a sequel, and I'm number one, you're number two. Both of those from the the newest Muppet movie, or this, the, I think that's the newest one. Um, Rubber Ducky, that's Ernie's song. I don't really like that one that much. I'm going to go back there someday. That's not bad. So I guess the question here is, which one of these is my favorite? That's a tough one. Maybe Life's a Happy Song. I don't know. Maybe. 
Life's a Happy Song is pretty good. But I also like Together Again. Hmm, we'll take one of those two. Alrighty. Do you think it's possible for a game to get better over time? It seems like when we look back at games, they mostly age po poorly. Sure, they, they often do age poorly, but we, eh, they get better over time a lot of times. I tend to like um, games. I like playing games. And um, I don't mind when they get better or worse over time. Um, because that's just how things change. But sometimes they get better as time goes by. But you're right. Sometimes they age poorly, but that's the way a lot of things are in life. What am I most excited about for Dexterity? I'm most excited about all my new Dexterity games. I know I keep talking about that, but I have a lot of really cool big ones that I was able to pick up, so I'm excited to show them off. What did the title Miami Dice mean on older videos? Nothing other than we were in Miami, so it was a playoff Miami Vice, and I just called Miami Dice, and it was just me and Sam reviewing videos together. Are the unboxing videos some of your most watched videos? It seems like it. Does that surprise you? It doesn't surprise me. It's not actually our most watched videos. Let me tell you, actually. So we'll go to last week. And the most watched video of last week. So let's do the last seven days. There we go. The number one video was the top 10 games that need a new edition. Not surprised there. Top 10 lists are always very popular. That's a popular topic. Number the two and three are both reviews. Gloomhaven Buttons and Bugs and Star Wars Unlimited because people like reviews of bigger games. These are, well, incidentally, they're both small games, but you know what I mean? They're popular games. Number four is Crowd Surfing. That's probably our most popular series. Then um, we had a couple shorts. Um... Then Chris's 21 reviews in 10 minutes. Then Catch a Palooza, Thunderstone Quest. Then Board Game Smorgasbord. And then Look Back. Um, then The Dutch Resistance, Aren't You Overcome. Then The Sea Salt and Paper Review. Then Unboxing. So that was number 13 on the videos from last week. Now, to be fair, it beat out a lot of other videos that we did. But, I mean, for... The amount of effort that goes into it, I'm always very pleased because they're the easiest videos we do. We put a lot of work in a lot of our videos. We do not necessarily put a lot of work in an unboxing video. I just open stuff up. I'm excited about some of the videos we got coming out this week. I mean, we're mostly going to be doing playing live stuff. So we're going to be playing live games today. We're going to be playing live games tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Five straight days of playing live games. This is kind of prepping us for next week when we do our 30-hour marathon. Um, but also later on this week, way later at the end of the week, I got reviews of Seven Citadel and, um, I'm doing my top 10 cards. I rip up in games and, uh, 41 games in so many minutes. And Chris is talking about an underused, underutilized, uh, video. Uh, I mean, an underutilized, uh, part of Board Game Geek as a video. You will never be bored on a cruise ship. Well, here's the thing. I think some people might be bored on a cruise ship, if, but I never look at a cruise ship as a thing to be bored. I always bring books. If I'm going on a personal cruise, let's say there's no board gaming. <laughs> okay. But I bring board games, obviously, on a cruise, on a personal cruise. I'll bring board games to play. But I also bring books. Always bring books. To read, reading a book on the deck or on a balcony, or wherever. So, like, I, later this year, I'm, I'm probably going to go on a, a personal cruise, and I'm just going to read a book. I, I don't have a balcony, because I'm going to get an insider room to save money. But I'll just go on the deck and read books, because that feels great. Where will the cruise be stopping? This year, the cruise is going to the... Uh, Puerto Rico, St. Martin, and then um, the the Royal Caribbean's island, which is Coco Cay. Coco Cay, I like Coco Cay. I've never been to the other two stops. Looking very much forward to seeing those. 
Do you know yet if you're hosting an award show at Gen Con again? I appreciate that you want to see it and that you said it was spectacular. And yes, we are planning to do that again. Did you ever have a much anticipated movie or series finale spoiled before you could see it? Um, probably. Like, I'm trying to think of the most anticipated stuff. I definitely, I wasn't spoiled on Endgame at all, Avengers Endgame. And I went into that one very much like, what's going to happen? And I was very happy with it. My daughter was spoiled. She had read on the internet about one of the main events. And then she wasn't sure if it was true or not, but it was. But that was great. Um, but what have I been spoiled on? I mean, I read spoilers myself. So a lot of this is self, self-induced. self A lot of times in books, I get too antsy. I'm like worried someone's going to die. So I'll peek at the last chapter to see if they're still alive. I won't apologize about that. It stresses me out too much. Um... Spoiled where I didn't want to know what would happen. I'm sure it's happened, but I can't remember like a traumatic experience about it. When will George R. R. Martin finish The Winds of Winter? Actually, I was reading about that this weekend because over the week, uh, I've been rereading um, In the Name of the Wind, uh, which I was like, oh, I wonder when he's... You know, he's supposed to finish his third book, and it's been 11 years since he's written a book either. This is craziness to me, especially the way they lead on their fans. They're like, oh, we're writing. Don't worry, we're writing. We're writing. At this word, I think they could write like one word every hour and still have finished the book in time. I don't know. I know people are always like, no, they don't owe fans anything. I disagree on that. They started something. They're making money off of it. They're going around and like living off of how popular these are. And they keep teasing people to sequels. And if, if you're going to do that, then you need to finish it. If, if, if you don't want to finish it or can't and say you can't, I'd be disappointed. But I'd give you more, more, you know, it's like the Kickstarter people who say, don't worry, the game's going to come eventually and they never ship it. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm happy that neither one of these series in the name of the wind or the I think it's the King Killer Chronicles or um, George R. R. Martin series, a, a Song of Ice and Fire. I'm, I'm not that invested in either one of them. I'm invested in Brandon Sanderson's book, which is coming out at the end of this year. That I am excited about, but I had to wait two years for that book. And that's pretty long in Brandon Sanderson time. A lot of people are talking about Maniac Mansion or, you know, the Curse of Monkey Island. Is there any new gaming apps that you've been enjoying lately? I don't think so. Um, on the app, on the phone, or not on the phone, I play on my iPad. On the iPad over the weekend and this week, I've been playing a decent amount of Hearthstone. I really like Hearthstone. Did I play Hearthstone this morning? I feel like I did. Um, Hearthstone is a fun game. I like the new set. I always like the new sets when I mess around with them and everything. And just having an enjoyable time with that. What has been my favorite fake board game announcement? Well, I mean, I don't want to be grinchy, but none of them really? Because either I look at it and... So there's like two different things, basically. They, you look at them and you go, well, that's so obviously fake. Meh. Or that sounds interesting. You get excited briefly, and then you're like, oh, well, I was hoping that was real. Like they had a ticket to ride to the moon or something, and I thought, well, that sounds interesting. So I'm interested in that. Then I, I'm like, oh, wait, it's April Fool's. Your best bet is just to ignore news for today. <laughs> yeah. As someone who plays Magic and board games, I always felt that there's some hard-to-articulate difference between Magic at most card games and board games, and was curious if you ever felt that. Maybe. Incidentally, I played Magic last week. I was playing some decks. I played a, a game with Z, a couple games with Z, and 
I think Magic is fading for me because these new card games seem to beat up on it just with their streamlined ability. For me, getting getting mana screwed or whatever they call it in Magic, basically in Magic you need cards to tap as lands. They're called lands. And you tap them to play other cards. Well, in your opening hand, you can get a bunch of lands or with no cards to play, or you can get a bunch of cards with no lands. And there are ways around that. The game has a mulligan where you can discard and draw up, although you would then have to discard a card, which you're punished for drawing poorly. It doesn't matter how good you shuffle your deck. Sometimes you just have these kind of games. And, and I feel that, right? I, 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 I really like games. I mean, I play a lot of Hearthstone. And Hearthstone, you just get one more resource every turn. That's it. There are cards that can affect that and change it, but that's it. And Star Wars Unlimited, Lord Kana, you can choose any card to be a resource. And those just seem better than Magic. And I, I mean, I know when you say this sort of thing, Matt, people who love Magic the Gathering are like, no, actually, I just think that if Richard Garfield redesigned Magic the Gathering today, it would be very different. Um, I think there would be a lot of differences to it. Who is the chief and the story behind him? Well, I don't have really time to get into the entire story about uh, Chief Sokotoa, um, but Chief Sokotoa, and that's his full name, um, he has different nicknames, and I mean, there's Chief Sokotoa, Destroyer of the Empka, Ruler of the Vimzos, Defender of the Realm, of Realms, of Realms, um, First of the Chomps, Ah, there's a lot. I don't have it all memorized. Anyway, he is a time-traveling, interdimensional, sort of private police officer, but works for a lot of the, works for the good, works on the side of good, and is out there apprehending criminals and other things, and fighting wars, and keeping you safe. You owe your peace and happiness to Chief Sokotoa in some sort of way. He and I worked together for several decades, um, but I'm not really cut out for that work, and so, but he is, and so I pop in from time to time. That's the TLDR. Alrighty. Mike Keller says, I'm bringing my copy of uh, Pitch Card at a big game bash in a few weeks. I'm leaving it set up for an event. Big game bash, if you're in South Florida at all, you definitely want to come to that. Um, that is going to be the end of April, so come on out. Now you know Pitch Car is going to be there. We also know that Mike's going to be hogging a table while we're there. Any thoughts on adding another convention throughout the year? Nope. <laughs> it's a lot of work. If you think about it, we do four weeks a year for our four conventions. That's four weeks out of 52. So that's already one thirteenth of the year. Um, and then... There's the week before and after each of those, which is also a lot of effort. They're just too much. Maybe someday when I don't run cons at all and I just show up to them as special guests. But even then, I think it'd be very difficult. The Paxes, I mean, those guys um, who run Penny Arcade are barely involved in the Penny Arcade conventions. And yet, still, they don't, I don't even think they actually canceled their fourth. I think they're just down to three. Whatever happened to the shelf reviews? Well, we phased that out. I don't do the same thing all the time. We didn't get through all the shelves already, but we might do that in the future. We will see. How do you handle the awkward situation where halfway through a game you realize the person you're playing with really doesn't like it? Well, if it's a two-player game, that's really easy. We stop. I'm not going to make someone play a game that they really hate. Multiplayer game's a little more complex, but I might be like, hey, if people aren't enjoying this, we can quit. I don't want to make people play games they don't like. Who's my favorite James Bond actor? Uh, Pierce Brosnan. I really like him as James Bond. How much would you value your hat collection? Well, I like it a lot. Uh, I think it's, a, it, it's good. I value it somewhere below... Like everything else, it's like a hat. They're fine. They're cool. Happiness Hotel. That's the song I'm talking about. I do like that one.
Why review Seven Citadel this week, actually? Now people are talking about Muppet Show songs. Whatever happened to the air horn, and why was there one in the city in the first place? I bought an air horn, I think, for us to blow when we first funded it in Kickstarter. I think that's why I bought it, and then I completely forgot about it. In fact, the very first time, I gave the air horn to Kenny and told him to do it and blow it, and then I forgot I did that, and then he scared the snot out of me. After that, it just has become a thing. I imagine a big video is when a review of a Kickstarter comes out and people flock to see if they messed up or not. Maybe, but some reviews don't do as well as others. Like, for example, I thought Divinus from Lucky Duck would be a pretty big game review. I mean, it got decent views, but not as much as I thought. And I thought that would be a much bigger game. Sometimes games surprise me with how popular they become, and sometimes they don't. It's not necessarily Kickstarter. Stonemaier games always do very well in views. And, you know, Gloomhaven was a review. Well, the, uh, the backer kit project, um, and what was the other one I said we did that week that had a lot of views? I can't remember, but oh, it was Star Wars Unlimited, and that wasn't Kickstarter at all. Do you have any funny stories of witnessing an influencer in the wild recording themselves? Well, when I was in Nashville last year, we went to look at the, uh, the temple there, and, uh, the Parthenon, sorry. And while we were there, I saw two middle-aged ladies just running around and arguing and doing, you know, like fighting and then not fighting. It was, it was, it was a little bizarre, but we knew almost instantly they were influencers and they were recording something for whatever. I've never seen them on my feeds or anything. I have no idea who they were. Um, but, oh, and when I, this year, I tested out the new cruise ship icon um, for uh, the uh, the newest ship in the biggest ship in the world. And when I was on there, there was, I mean, it was full of influencers. And so I made faces in the back of as many of their videos as I could. But I don't know if that ever showed up anywhere. Do you have a list of top 10 ideas that you plan to make? Uh, I do. Uh, it's not so much a list. I have a list of ideas. So there's two ways I... I Sometimes we talk it out here in the studio, some ideas to come out. Sometimes I go back and I'm like, it's time to redo this top 10. And I also have a, anytime someone sends me an idea for top 10, I keep it. I'm not saying I'll ever use it, but I definitely keep them and think about them. Do you know if Arkham Horror 3rd Edition is done? I thought they just announced a new expansion for it. Who do you think plays the most games at the Dice Tower? It might be Joey. I think it's me. It's me, Joey, or Chris. Um, but I don't know which of us it would be. What's my favorite TV show that was canceled? I don't know. That's a good question. There's definitely some, but I'm trying to try to remember what they are. I'm not gonna say Firefly, because I don't really care. Um mm. the um Oh, the carpoolers or what was that what it was called? People who carpooled to work? I wish they made a, a sequel to that one because it was pretty funny. But I don't remember many others. I'm sure there are some. What's my perspective on the lost TV show? Not 14 years have passed since the finale. I think that's probably one of my least favorite finales ever in the history of, of TV. Because I'll tell you what, I've never, ever gone back and watched any episode of Lost other than me getting my hair cut and it's on in the barbershop or something like that. I just don't care because I know that if I go back and watch an old episode of Lost, I'll be annoyed. Because I'll watch it and then they'll say, they never answered this. They never explained that. They never did this. Oh, here's this whole sequence about the others and we're never going to find out any more about them. I, yeah, there were good stories. They had me hooked the whole way through. I thought the finale was a huge letdown. 
I think it didn't end very well. Um, and they answer questions I didn't care about and then answer other questions. Someone made a video one time of like all the questions I didn't answer and lost and it's just infuriating. So yeah, there's some interesting ideas in that show maybe and I love the idea of mystery, but yeah. Where do you rank Mistborn in Sanderson's catalog? It's my second favorite series he's done. Well, especially the Wayne and Wax one. I like that one a lot. Both Martin and Rothfuss got TV slash movie money, and I think it's hard to sit down and work when you're filthy rich. There's probably some truth to that. You have to have a lot of discipline, I think, to keep doing it. At a convention at least five years ago, he went to a sci-fi convention as a guest and told the convention staff to tell the members not to ask about the final book of the series. Right, because that's what people are always going to ask that question. And he promised that people could, hey, you read over the things that like he promised that if you don't do it, I give you permission to chain me to a cab and to do it. He had 2020 where he was at home the whole year. Yeah. Lost finish in 2010. The last book of the Throne series came out in 2011. <laughs> um, after a big Dice Tower event like East of the Retreat, how damaged is the game library? They always get beat up a bit. They get beat up the most on the cruise because on the cruise, people can take it throughout the ship. On Dice Tower East, the Retreat doesn't get beat up that much. East gets beat up a bit, but they're not allowed to leave the gaming center. You're not allowed to take them to your rooms or anything. You're not going to take your game to your room to any of my cons. People still do it every time. And I'm going to start banning people who do it because it's rude to everybody else. And people always come up with a good, well, I wanted to read the rules. You can read the rules online. You know, the, 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 I always find it a little frustrating at different cons. And I want to be, I want to emphasize that at our cons, like 99% of people are fantastic and wonderful. But people who seem that they're just very selfish, they'll take a game. And they'll go and they'll sit with that game at a table and they'll play another game. And nobody else can play that game either. They're like, well, I'm going to play it later. But then don't check it out till later. But then it might not be there. Yes, we know, Mr. Selfish. You're putting yourself over everybody else. Other people can be playing that game right now. But you're so selfish, you won't allow that. Or people who take it to their room at night. And they're like, ah, I'm going to play it in my room. I might lose a piece there and it will never be found. But, nah, I pay for the convention. That's part of the price of paying. You're right, it is part of the price of paying for a con, but it still doesn't make you a very nice person. All righty. Where are they now? Of all the past contributors to breakfast shows, it'll be fun to watch. Even those who did a handful of episodes. Oh, man. There are so many people. Sometimes I went back and we put like an old episode of Board Game Breakfast on... Um, uh, Dice Tower TV, and I was like, man, I, I forgot some of these people were even on the show. There's different people who have come on the show and done segments and did different things, and I think that stuff's great, and I always was never very strict about it, like, oh, you want to leave? You can leave, and some people went on to start their own channels. You see Chaz, with, he's on uh, Rodney's channel, and Rob Oren has his own channel. Uh, some people just disappeared. They stopped gaming or whatever. And other people are still around or just doing other things in the board game industry. I'm always pleased by that. You know, it's good to see people do well. Do I still play Marvel Snap? I don't, actually. I kind of, I stopped. When did I stop? It's been a while. I want to say it's been, it's been, I stopped. I was playing it every day. And I stopped, maybe it was during the retreat last year, and I just stopped playing it. And once you stop, it's hard to get back in. I finally finished Rhythm of War last year. First time around, it was so depressing, I had to put it down. Still unsure if I will read the next book or just read the last chapter to see the end state. 
Ah, uh, well, yeah, but his books always get depressing, but then the light is amazing at the end. Board game prices seem to be on the rise each year. Do you think this may cause a market collapse? I do not think so, because I don't know if you noticed, all prices are on the rise each year. That's just how inflation works. Sometimes board games lag behind inflation. Sometimes they're even with it. But as it is, I just don't see prices going down anytime soon. Um... Oh, the folding space table. Yeah, now see that? But that to me was such a, it was a funny, interesting idea that's also really clearly a joke. Yeah, maybe I'm a hypocrite. I'm going to pull up Facebook right now to see what else has popped up here. I'm not seeing any other... Any other fake news advertisements? Okay. Well, anywho, let's get back here. Um... Did I watch Wonka? I did watch Wonka, and I enjoyed it a lot, actually. Seth says, I'll be the magic nerd defending the land system. It does introduce variants, but magic designers have done a lot to make it interesting and minimize non-games. It also adds a lot of richness. I'm not going to argue with that, actually. I think it does add richness. I think having five different things, it allows you to have more powerful characters that require different types. It encourages interesting ways to build decks and all. But it still has that major problem where you just don't draw what you need at the beginning of a game. And that's just not as fun to play. I, I don't know any way around that. Yes, they've made different ways to dip, dive in your deck and do things, but... What would you tell someone to start doing now to get ready for their first Gen Con? I would tell you to buy tickets and then that's it. You don't need to prepare to go to the con. Maybe a few weeks before, and you can look at the different schedules. May, uh, when the events open up in May, you know, you can say, oh, these are the events I'd like to go to um, and do that. And then make some plans the weeks before, but you don't need to like prep for it. Just go and have a good time. Um... Does Dice Tower enjoy lawn games like bocce or club? I like that stuff. I'm, I, I'm not going to speak for the Dice Tower. I'll speak for just me. I like that stuff fine. I find that stuff to be interesting. And, you know, it's interesting to see different things that you can play and do um, outside. I find that stuff to be fun. Top 10 rules that people get wrong in board games. That might be interesting as a small top 10 one time. What's the best April Fool's prank that you've ever been part of? Well, the best one I ever did was I did one to my uh, original co-host, Joe Stedman. So I, uh, Joe Stedman was the first co-host of the Dice Tower. And if you met Joe, he's just one of those guys who makes an impression, right? He's very loud. Loves to be, you know, he likes to play jokes on other people, says whatever he thinks of. He's just, he's the perfect kind of person that if you pull a practical joke on him, the whole room will stand up and applaud. Perhaps I'm in that group too, so take that as you will. So I decided months ahead of time I was going to do a joke with on Joe. So I emailed him, I made up a fake email address, and I said, hi, um, and for the life of me, I can't remember the name of the guy. So we'll just call him Joe Blow for now. So hi, I'm Joe Blow. I read one of your reviews, and it was terrible, man. And so Joe was like, what are you saying? How can he? Because Joe would like, Joe would never back down from that stuff. He jumped in, and I was like, oh, I'm just kidding. I was like, I actually, actually like your style. You tell it how it is. You're not, you know, your, your co-host is, 
Yeah, Mappy Pampy, just, uh, he's dithering all the time. You know, you say the way it is. And he's like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and and so um, I, if, if you want this to be believable, you can't make the person too perfect. So this guy was a lot like Joe, but not 100%. I made him so that he lived close to where Joe did, but not right on the spot. I found some random pictures of a guy on the internet with board games. And I'm sorry to whoever that guy was. And sent them to Joe. And then this guy was like, hey, there's this there's local store near me that have all these out-of-print war games. And they're just basically blowing out. And you know what? I'm coming to Korea in April. And I'm going to, uh, you know, do you want me to bring any of these? And uh, so Joe was excited about that. Now, so Joe would come and he would tell me about this. And he would brag to me and say, ah, this guy is going to bring me these games and stuff. And I told nobody about this except my wife. And my wife would laugh and laugh every time he said this, but my wife laughs about everything. So happily, Joe never noticed um, that, that she was laughing at, not with him. He thought she was laughing at the, he had a good friend that I didn't. Anyhow, so Joe went to the principal of our school, we both taught in Korea at the time, and asked if he could take the day off to go meet this guy at the airport. So I had to go intercept that. I went and told the principal, it was a big practical joke. Principal, who Joe worked for, thought this was an amazing practical joke. Um, and so just declined to give Joe the day off. So yada, yada. So this got big. The guy had a list of board games he was bringing to Joe. And then that morning, I asked if I could speak in the teacher's meeting in the morning. And I, and like the hour before that, that's when I told everyone else about the joke. Because you don't tell people ahead of time. Uh, uh, three people can keep a secret if two of them are dead. And so then um, I gave a little spiel about something else, you know, announcement. Then I was like, and by the way, I am Joe Blow. And then everyone laughed. Joe was annoyed briefly and got over it pretty quickly because it was pretty funny. Um, that is, someone just said in the comments, that's mean. And I don't disagree. Um, uh, I would not do that now. This was almost 20 years ago now, was it? Wow, I'm old. Uh, it was probably 20 years ago that I did this. So, you know, I don't, you know, I don't think necessarily, you know, we all do things without thinking and afterwards you're like, should I have done that? So yeah, I probably shouldn't have. I think if you're gonna do a practical joke, the long con is great. And you wanna make sure no one gets hurt. And, and, and I mean, especially physically, like, I did not want him to take time off work. I don't want someone to lose money because of a practical joke or even time necessarily. Um, so I, uh, yeah, he was annoyed, he said at first, but then we laugh about it now. And also it was, like I said, 20 years ago. So these things, and he was always playing jokes and stuff on me. Again, if you would see some of the, if... <laughs> Ah, well, anyhow, if I could go back in time and redo it all over again, I'd still do it. It was pretty funny. And Joe deserved it, maybe. Would 47-year-old Tom do it? No, he would not, because he would sit there and go, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe this is, maybe this is a little too far, um, I did a similar thing to my father-in-law a couple years before that, and uh, that one didn't go over as well. And so I tell my kids now, practical jokes and stuff, they're funny, but you really have to do something where the person's going to laugh about it with you. Um, you've been punked is kind of a good example of that sometimes, but it, it, it's a tough thing to do to play jokes on other people. My son today was like, what is April Fool's? Is it just a day where people lie to each other? And I was like, yeah. He's like, well, what is the point of that? Like from the mouth of babes, I guess, you know, he doesn't understand that, that that's, you know, what it is. But anywho, that is my April Fool's story. I have not really done a big, long con like that since. We've done some jokes here in the Dice Tower. My favorite one we've done is we did a top 10 hard to get games or top 10 obscure games. I forget the title of it, where three of the games we completely made up. And I even got them put on Board Game Geek with comments. <laughs> from other people talking about how great or terrible they were. Um, <laughs> they're all gone now, those games. And we posted that, 
and I watched, and nothing happened. I was like, no one got the joke. No one got it. Um, so, anyhow. Uh, well, there you go, folks. Welcome to April. Yes, there's a lot of April Fool's jokes, for good or for bad, going off today. Let people have their fun. If they make this silly announcements, I'll just ignore them. Um, and if they want to make them and people enjoy it, let them have fun. Because I see people get mad either way. Like, ah. And I do that a little bit too. I'm like, ah. Trying to find actual news on the board games. It's hard. At the same time, people are enjoying themselves and having fun. But April's here, which means spring is here. I mean, technically spring was started last week or whatever. But spring is here. It's a good time of year. As a non-teacher, spring is not nearly as hectic as it once was. Um, as I see a lot of teachers always look like harried and wilting at this point in time. But uh, spring is here. We have the 30-hour marathon happening next week. I'm always excited about that. We got live plays we're doing this week here in the Dice Tower. First one will be later on today. We'll be trying this Primal the Awakening here, this giant box I showed you earlier. Is it good? Will it be fun? I haven't a clue. That's three hours from now. So I better start setting it up now because it looks like it takes a while to set up. But anyhow, folks, I appreciate you all watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. I will see you next time. Don't say until tomorrow, Rex. We're doing a live play today. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Diary.